What is up? We're here with my man Chavez. You're um, one of the emerging prospects in the sport of boxing. Real, uh, I can't, I'm trying not to cuss. We're trying to be family friendly. So real bad A uh, boxer, uh, beat up a lot of people in the Ammies. Got it. I'm, I'm hyping you up. How, how does it feel to be on the show and all that stuff? No, it feels great. I haven't uh, done an interview since my last fight. So it's good to be back and doing these interviews. It's all good, man. I love I love talking with you. I'm a nerd at amateur boxing, and I really believe in you and your brother. And to be honest, I don't want to go down this path. I think it's a little unfair when people are critical of you guys because you're very young. Like, you're very yeah. young, and you're doing something not a lot of people do. Yeah. I think it just that just comes with the sport. You know, when, when, you got, when you're succeeding, you just have haters. So I think that just comes with it, you know. So that's just something you got to deal with. Well, me being someone where everyone's just telling me my opinions are wrong, being a media guy, like that's all I get. Like, oh, you're an idiot. I think part of it for the fans is this is a conflict sport and they want the conflict of the fight, but they don't want to get beat up. So it's, uh, their, it's their way of being in like a fight. It's just really yeah. annoying. I mean, yeah, that's how it is. You know, you always got them haters, you know, that are sitting on the couch doing nothing, commenting on, oh, you should have moved your head more, but, like, they're not in the ring doing it for you. So, yeah, it, it comes with its pros and cons, but, yeah, you're always going to have them haters. Okay, well, talk me through uh, kind of what you've been doing. You're in the gym. Give me an update. Uh, we've been, uh, we've been, you know, staying ready in the gym. I was supposed to have a fight February 27th, but that fell out because I didn't uh, get the right opponent. So now we're uh, moving on and I'm supposed to have a date April 17th. So, you know, we're just skipping from one training camp to another. So we're right back in another training camp. So, uh, yeah, we're getting ready for that fight. If I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure you're training with your father. Correct. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. From the last time we had talked. And um, you guys are extremely successful at what you've done. Like you and your brother were really good amateurs. How are you feeling transitioning to a pro? I'm sure there's some, uh, like some bit of a learning curve to adjust yeah. to the system. How is it? Yeah, it's, it's been a great like experience. You know, uh, we always, we're learning stuff, something new every single fight. So, uh, you know, it's just like slowing down the pace, landing harder and cleaner punches. So it's a big transition from the amateurs, you know, amateurs, you got to score fast and start fast and uh, pros is a little different. So uh, it's totally different, but it's, it's, I like it. It fits me. When I look at you and your brother's style, it's a lot about distance control. And so yeah. it's like controlling the distance. So it's making that work. Um, I guess what, what's motivating you right now in your career? What's your why right now? Right now, what's motivating, motivating in my career just to be successful, you know, I just want to be a world champion and see how far I can get in the sport. Okay. And who are you currently getting work with and stuff um, out in Vegas? Uh, right now, we uh, we haven't been getting too many prospect big names. I, I've been worked with, uh, what's his name? Uh, the one that just fought on the top green card like two fights ago. I think it was uh, Gabriel Flores. Gabriel Flores, yeah. Friend Gabriel. of the program. Yeah. He's a big prospect right now. I, I was sparring him like maybe a month ago, you know, before I was, when I was getting ready for my fight. So I was sparring him. I sparred uh, another, a couple of Vegas prospects that are like 8 and 0. So, yeah, I've been getting some good work. I mean, that's good. That's a lot of good work. And when you spar someone like Gabe, he can yeah. relate to the situation um, being a young fighter because he turned pro at such a young age, not just yeah. are you sparring someone who's a good fighter. You also can look at how he's going about doing it because I think that people, I keep going back to this. People don't understand how young you are. You're like eight, yeah. your college age. Like you should be in college, but people are, yeah. are looking at you like you're a grown man and how you fight right now is how you're going to fight for 20 years. Yeah. Yeah. That's how it is. You know, uh, uh, people people don't realize how young we are and I don't think I realize how young I am either because I've been going uh, I've been really successful lately so yeah um, it all comes happen so fast you know yeah I mean it's that's why I harp on this because I think it's it's happening so fast and you and your brother have it have talent where you make it look like your guys are 25 years old even though you're yeah. not that age and then that's uh, where even though I'm an interviewer I get protective of young people because it's you're young. You need to be a kid. You get to grow up at your own pace. You don't need that. Yeah, I feel like uh, we don't we don't really grow up as 18 year old as regular 18 year olds. You know, we always like I feel like we're way more mature because 
we uh, done way more than a regular 18 year old, but you know, actually there's more experience from 18 to 20, 25 years old as you get uh, throughout that pro career. So yeah, we're still learning as uh, young professionals. What was the hardest fight of your amateur career? Hardest fight? Um, I had I had like two hard fights. Uh, I would say one is uh, this dude named Jamal Harvey. So I know him. You know him? Yeah. In he's, Maryland he's, in the building, he's, DMV. Yeah, he's a good amateur. Uh, I fought him twice, and uh, he it's one and one. But uh, yeah, every single time I fight, I'm not going to be a hard fight, and I know I'm going to be tied in the last round. So we go at it. So yeah, that's probably one uh, one of the tougher fights I had. What is it about Jamal that makes him a tough fighter? Uh, he it's his uh his his style his style is a little uh unorthodox and he got really long arms so like he could reach you and like he and he got a uh, unorthodox style so yeah he 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 got a good jab with his uh he got a long long jab and he's a little tricky. So okay, uh, a good fighter. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's interesting to hear fighters' perspectives. I was saying this to someone the other day. The fighters know who's really good out there. It's like in any sport. If you talk to the athletes, they can tell you who's good. It's just yeah. oftentimes people don't ask you guys. Yeah, not a lot, not a lot of people ask us, but we'll tell you, like, we keep it straight up. Like, I'm not going to say, oh, even the dude, even if the dude's good, I'm not going to say, oh, he's not good. Like, I'm going to keep it real. Okay. Um what are you expecting for this year from your pro career? Like, are you looking to be in more six round fights? Like, where do you see your career going this year? Uh, I think I'm going to start with six. Uh, well, I'm doing six right now. So I think we're going to move up to eight in a couple of fights. But I'm looking to get, you know, four, four or five fights in this year. So I'm trying to be active. You're trying to get a lot of activity. Yeah. You're trying to get a lot of experience. And uh -huh. that's kind of the plan for this year. Yep, we're not trying to rush it too fast, but we want to get uh, want we want to be pretty pretty busy without being like jumping, jumping into fifteen fights and big fights yet. But we're gonna take it slow but fast at the same time. Okay, elephant in the room. Um, obviously, the day after Christmas, you guys both fought. Your brother had an unfortunate um result. How yeah. have you as a team kind of um dealt with that and been there for each other? Yeah. Um, you know, it was just a lucky shot, you know, uh, looking at my brother, I feel like my brother's really good. And, uh, just that, cause that happened, I feel like he's going to be the same fighter or even better from learning that, you know, uh, just seeing my brother get caught, like he, I, we talked about it and he was just like, yeah, like I, he said, I was winning the whole fight. I just got caught and like, it happens, you know, the, the, there's pros like Pacquiao, he got knocked out his like third fight. No need on there. He knocked. I think he lost his second fight. So Rosendo you know, Sanchez. Yeah, there's there's plenty of fighters that lost early in their career and came back stronger. So I feel like that's what my brother's gonna do. Yeah, it's, uh, we'll let you look at Marquez. I believe Marquez lost his first fight. My favorite fighter yeah. ever, Bernard Hopkins, lost his first fight. Uh, yeah. Well, education time. I gave you a yeah. little history lesson, but um, the the thing about those situations are it really shows a lot about a fighter. It shows how much you want it because there's going to be a lot of people doubting. And if you want it, you're going to be self-motivated and more driven. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of people telling my brother, Oh, you should have took that fight. You shouldn't. And you know, we know, we know what we can handle. So we felt like that was a good fight and he just got caught with the lucky, uh, lucky punch. And yeah. So I feel like that's just going to make him even stronger. What makes you um, unique as a fighter? Um, I feel like we're really, uh, well, I'm really smart and I got a good jab and I keep my distance really good. So I feel like that picks us, uh, apart from the rest of the group. Okay. So you're able to think, so you're, I feel like I, when I see you, I think high, high hands, you're trying to yeah. control a fighter. You don't want them to get to the mid range. You want to keep them at the edge of your punches. And I, I see a lot of turning and your feet never crossing each other. Yeah. It's all about like keeping the distance for us, you know? Uh, we got, we got advantage that we're long and tall. So we try to, uh, use that advantage to the best of our ability. So yeah, when we go in the ring, we try to keep a distance as much as we can, you know, stay busy with that jab and try to make a miss. You kind of, you and your brother kind of remind me since it's the NCAA March Madness coming up, you remind me of the teams that like to slow the game down. Like you yeah. want to slow it down and then make someone that have to think, 
walk yeah. them into punches, but like you want the pace to be a certain pace. You want to control the pace, control the range. And then when you set your pace, it's extremely dangerous because that person's going to be jumping into these areas where you have tons of time to react. Yeah, you said exactly how we do it. You know, we, <laughs> we, 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 we go in there looking for uh, trying to be smart, not just trying to keep our hands up and throw big old blows, you know. We want to be smart and look good while we uh, perform. So you said exactly how we do it. Okay. And are you guys adding a little bit um, extra to like maybe physical conditioning maybe this year um, because you guys are so boxing heavy, you know, mm -hmm. that that's going to probably be a game plan for some guys in the future will be, I'm going to be super buff and I'm going to bull rush yeah. you. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we, uh, you know, we we go back and look at our tape and then we work on stuff. So we've been working a lot on the inside, even though we don't have to. But when, you know, there's always going to be that fight where someone's going to take you to that level. And that's what you're going to have to do. So, uh, you know, we always work on the gym, even if we don't, we're not in this inside. You know, we're working on being on the inside, throwing them good punches where once we're in the inside and they get hit with the inside and they don't want to be on the inside. So then we come back in the outside. You feel me? So that's, that's how we, uh, that's how we're practicing. Well, one of my favorite fighters in the country right now that's on the come up is Rasheem Jefferson jr. And that's what makes him so yeah. dangerous at that weight is he can fight you on the outside and the inside. And then it's like, that's a headache because it's like, what do we try to do? Fight him in the mid range and just have yeah. weird timing. Like what's yeah, the game plan? I know who he is. Yeah. So, I mean, well, all the good fighters know each other. That's just the nature yeah. of this business is it like if anyone's good, everyone knows each other. It's just the fans don't know these names. Uh, yeah. Are you named after Chavez? Yep. I'm named after who said that Chavez. My dad, uh, when my dad uh, had us, he was like, oh, my son's going to be boxers. So he named what he named me uh, after who said that Chavez. I mean, that's, um, does, do you find any inspiration from his fights or do you get motivated knowing you were, you're literally born into a fighting family? Yeah. Oh yeah. I get, I get motivated that I'm named after him. Uh, you know, I watch a couple of his fights, but, uh, I really, one of my favorite fighters is Pacquiao. So yeah, I, I, I like, I like Chavez a lot. I, I never met him, but I want to meet him one day. Okay. And, um, correct me if I'm wrong because I'm always wrong. Uh, you're you are Filipino or you're part Filipino yeah I'm Mexican Filipino okay hell of a combination that's Chavez yeah. and Pacquiao together yeah. um so that must be inspirational not just because he's a great fighter he's a legend he's one of the best combination punches ever punchers ever one of the best falling punchers but he's also like a Filipino boxer and you could see a little bit of yourself in him yeah yeah, I, I, I really look uh, up to Pacquiao, you know, uh, just just how he's a, such a humble guy and he got a lot of heart. Like, it doesn't matter who is who's he against, like, he's going to fight the same way, even harder every single time. Man, yeah, I mean, shoot, maybe if he gets another fight, I know you got a fantastic team around you. Maybe you might end up on one of his cards if he keeps going. Yeah, that'd be crazy. I, I want him to retire, though. You know, he's he done everything in the sport. There's nothing you could ask for him, so. Hopefully he retires. I don't want him to fight no Earl Spence or Crawford. They're too, like, young, you know? I mean, I think that it's safe to say he's one of the 15 best boxers ever, you know? Yep. And it's like he's probably top 10. It's just it's yep. too early to say it. And I'm uh -huh. kind of with you. Like, I only want to see him fight old guys. Like, if yeah. he fights someone, just like, let's get an older guy in there. Let's get maybe, like, Mikey Garcia. He's a little older. They can have, like, a cool veteran fight. But I don't really want to see – I want the young guys to fight the young guys. Yeah, like, I don't want to see Earl Spence uh, fight Pacquiao. It's, it's too, like – yeah, he's too young. It just it, – it feels kind of wrong. Not yeah. no shade, but it just – it feels like this guy's, like, a lot older than you. Yeah, it does. Uh -huh. yeah. So n now I'm being a hater on the low. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to think. What was my other thing that I was going to? Marvin Hagler. Marvin Hagler passed away. I know a lot of boxers, and me in particular, I was inspired by him. I know you're extremely young, so you never mm -hmm. saw any of his fights, but I'm sure yeah. maybe. Did you see any of his clips? Have you found nah, inspirations I, from him? No, nah, I never got the chance to uh, see, a, see a couple of his fights. I heard of them, but I never watched them. Oh, crazy. Well, one day in the future, you will watch him, and I'm sure you will find inspiration because what Marvin Hagler was was – he was the guy that went up to the toughest guy anywhere and said, I want to fight you and I want to knock you out. And I think mm -hmm. that for any fighter, there's a lot of inspiration to be had from Marvin Hagler. 
because his mentality was that of, I think, a pure fighter in the sense, I want to find the best guy and I want him to be scared of me. Yeah. Uh-huh. I feel like, uh, yeah, that that needs to come back. I feel like uh, a lot of fighters are just trying to do it for the money. Yeah, well, I think that what's going to happen is, not to go business talk, is if we have too many of that stuff, the fans aren't going to buy the fights. So yeah. then it's like, do you want nobody to watch or do you want the sport to be up? And I think that's what's exciting about young fighters like yourself is you want to challenge yourself going to take these hard fights and us as fans and media we're going to be excited because these are fights that excite us and they excite you and that's we i think at the end of the day we all want boxing to be as as high up as possible because it gives all of us opportunities we want to be up there with the nba we want to be up there with the nfl we don't want to be at the bottom we want to be somewhere in the middle or at the top and that starts with great fights that gets the fans excited yeah, I feel like this generation could bring it back, you know, uh, like how it was with like in the Mike Tyson days. Uh, yeah, for sure. I feel like it could bring it back. Yeah, and I, I that's why I love taking time to talk with someone like you, your brother, a lot, because I think that you guys are going to be in a lot of exciting fights. You're being built up. You're with a great organization. You have a fantastic team around you. Um, any other things you want to touch on uh, that's going on with you currently? Um, I just currently uh, outside of boxing, I just did a Louis Vuitton. Uh, I modeled for Louis Vuitton. So, yeah, that's something new. Uh, it's pretty crazy because my bo- my uh, world is all around boxing. You know, So it's cool to step out of like boxing and do something else. Man, that is that is a big, big deal. Um, man, that is like really expensive clothing. Like I've only yeah. walked through that clothes. Like, and they definitely are not like, Hey man, can you model this? So that, that must be flattering. Like what do they do? Take your shirt off, wear this gear, look sexy. Yeah. Yeah. It was just like a, a two day shoot. We did a, a couple months ago and they just released the photos. So I'm pretty hyped about that. We did it with uh, 21 Savage. So it was pretty cool. That'd be cool. If you could, if, if you build a relation, did you, did you guys talk and did you explain who you were? No, nah, not too much because they were so strict with COVID because I was in California. So I only got to say what's up to them. But hopefully in the future, uh, we could, uh, you know, we'll get, hopefully I get bigger and stuff happens, you know. Yeah, I just, I rode an airplane in California. And just a pro tip, the only place they're not strict about COVID is airplanes. Like they jam packed yeah. the airplane. I'm like, what's going on? This is like the place where I wanted it to be strict. But yeah. Um, no, that's cool, man. So you're, do you think you're going to branch into modeling more and more as your career goes? Oh, oh yeah, definitely. I feel like uh, we got, we got a couple more things headed, uh, planned ahead of us. So yeah, definitely. We're going to do more modeling and yeah. How did, the, how did that get set up? Did they reach out to you? Did your management team set that up or what happened? Actually my, uh, my cousin Cheeto, his name is Cheeto. Uh, he models for Supreme. So he uh, had us, sign up for this uh, modeling management and the modeling management uh, got us that Louis gig. So that's, uh, that's how it all happened. Shout out to Cheeto, man. Cheeto yeah. came through clutch. Yep. He did. That's my cousin. <laughs> Your cousin Cheeto. Well, that is cool, man. And it's also cool. Do you think that one day you might have some Louis Vuitton trunks in the boxing ring? I think that might be a good look. Oh yeah, maybe maybe in the future I'll definitely like do something if they want to do something. That'd be that'd be sick. Well, it, I just I'm all a big fan of boxers doing things that other people aren't doing because it's interesting, and that this sport is entertainment. So interesting mm-hmm. is good. Yeah. Uh huh. You're right. So okay, well you're you're doing well in the ring, but you're also a a male model now. So congratulations on yeah. being a high end male model. That's great. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Thank you. You're very welcome. I'm proud that I'm proud. I, that's one thing I can say. I never was, was a male model. You got me. I've never been a pro boxer. I've never been a male model. You got me. What, are, before I get you out of here, what are the video games you're playing? Cause I see the gamer chair. Yeah. Right now I'm playing, uh, you know, Warzone. I play Warzone and I play 2k. Those are my two games. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Are you, are you taking fades in those or uh cold war uh, actually uh yeah warzone and 2k 2k anybody can get on 2k oh okay. but my I play now my career you're playing my career so 
you're taking yeah. a little time off. Okay. A little, it's like a little OTA, a little training camp. You're going to come yeah. back in for, okay. I get what you're doing. Um, where can people follow you on social media and all that stuff? Uh, people can follow me on Instagram at Chavez Barrientes and on Twitter, Chavez underscore P for P. Okay. Well, it was great catching up with you and uh, I look forward to seeing you again. Thank you. Have a good day.